Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the challenge you have received already. Thank you for your spirit that's already here. Thank you because your church is marching, marching on. We cannot fail. We cannot be defeated. Jesus has won the victory for us already. We identify with him. And we are going to do what he wants us to do. We'll do it the way he wants us to do it. At last, we'll receive well done. Good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Lord, we pray that in the brief moment we have together now, you speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Exodus chapter 14, reading from verse 15, Exodus 14, 15. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, Speak unto the children of Israel, That they go forward. As we begin our conference for this year, There is no other word we want to meditate upon, To launch the movement on, Except the words of our God, The forward march. Go forward. I'm sure that as a student of the Bible, you know the story in chapter 14. But there are many people that know the story in chapter 14, but they do not really well understand the command of the Lord. Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. God had spared and saved his people. Through manifold signs, wonders, and miracles, he had delivered them from years of bondage and servitude. They were redeemed and adopted into his family. They were now being led into the promised land. But when they thought all their troubles were over, they saw the Egyptians were Pharaoh and his chariots coming behind them, marching after them. In front of them was an impassable obstacle, the Red Sea. On either side, there were difficulties that will hinder them to escape. And then behind the Egyptian chariots. And yet, surrounded by all those difficulties, the Lord said, Tell the children of Israel to go forward. And this year to each individual saved, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The Lord is saying, go forward. To every family whose hope is in the Lord, the Lord commands, go forward. To the church on divine mission on earth, the Lord is saying, go forward. It was a challenge. To Israel to believe and to obey. And this is a challenge to our faith as well. It's a call for us to obey and to move on, to go forward. There are three points we're going to briefly consider. Number one, individual progress. Number two, family progress. Number three, church progress progress. Number one, individual progress in spite of obstacles. Number two, family progress in spite of opposition. Number three, church progress in spite of obstructions. Number one, go forward. Individual progress in spite of obstacles. See it again 
in Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. The Lord said unto Moses, Why, wherefore, criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Obviously, you understand. The commandment to the nation was to every individual in that nation, telling us obstacles, problems, difficulties, enemies, trials, confusion, fears, and not acceptable excuses in the sight of the Lord for standing still, or for going back, or for growing cold. Any of us can tell negative stories. Any of us, if we wanted to, we can talk about obstacles, talk about problems, talk about difficulties, talk about hindrances. We can give a thousand and one reasons why this is not the best time to go forward. But in the midst of those problems and obstacles and hindrances, the Lord is commanding you as an individual, march on, move on, move forward. It is a divine call and commandment to go forward. He compels the faint-hearted to move on. Instead of groping in uncertain speculations, instead of murmuring over unfavorable circumstances, instead of sitting down with a feeling of discouragement and nursing gloomy meditations, march on at his command. There is danger in sitting down in dejection. The Egyptian chariots are not slowing down. March forward. Although Pharaoh drew near, God was much nearer. You believe that? A greater army was gathering behind them. And yet, the angel of the Lord's presence was in their midst. God's supernatural power was available to make a passage for them to go forward. They were to go forward, one, in divine, in obedience to a divine command. When you realize that the commandments you have are not commandments from human beings, they are commandments from the Lord himself, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And you know that when he gives a command, he gives also a promise and he gives his power to back it up. You will not be afraid. You will march forward. Number two, God's presence and power was theirs, was there to help them. And number three, the forces of nature and even the movement of the Egyptian chariots will be supernaturally controlled if they would obey his commandment to go forward. Going forward would complete and finalize their victory over the Egyptians. Do you realize before this time they had got some victory? Now they were by the Red Sea. And to have the final victory over the Egyptians, they were to move forward. Their obedience to this final commandment to move on, to march on, to go forward will finalize their victory over the Egyptians. And so, when you have a difficulty, you have a problem. And the Lord is saying, march forward, move on. That means, if you will obey, that will be the final thing that breaks the head and the backbone of the devil. Let's march forward. That's the watchword from the Lord for us this year. March on. God is calling every Christian. He's calling every Christian leader, go on to perfection. Press toward the mark of your high calling. He has called us to go forward. Go forward in grace. March on in faith. Move on in love. Go forward in obedience. Let the fruit of the Spirit increase in your life this year. Let the virtues of the Christian life increase in your life this year. Obviously, you know, for the children of Israel, it was a commandment that seemed natural, physical. 
for us the church what was natural for them physical for them for us is spiritual move on in galatians chapter 5 reading from verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love and joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness and temperance let these fruits increase in your life this year you have been born again you have been sanctified you have been filled with the holy ghost and you have these fruits already in your life but go forward let your love increase your love for god your love for your fellow men the joy of the lord jesus and you with nothing between not just happiness that depends on the things happening around you but the joy of the lord whether the egyptians are there or not let your joy increase the red seas in front of you or not let the joy of the lord increase move on and march forward and let the peace of god that passes understanding let it be in your heart long suffering endure more suffer longer and be gentle more gentle and then let there be goodness let there be faith let there be meekness that's tied in with humility and let there be temperance self-control in second peter chapter one second peter chapter one reading from verse five and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith don't stay at the same level move on add something to what you have got already let this congress add something to your spiritual life let it be after the conference after the congress that you would say you'll be able to testify i had faith before the foundation was laid but now i'm moving temporarily continually go forward until it is a ritual and now it adds and and means to go in to go forward it's a call to family progress in spite of opposition the family for the family to heed at or to obey this call to march forward each member must belong to god how could you obey the commandments of the lord without belonging to the lord without having the grace of god in your life each member of the family will belong to god if you are going to see the whole family moving on marching forward imagine for a moment an israelite yoked to an egyptian there will be tension perhaps even trial greater than that might even be torture that will hinder the uh, progress of that israelite because if you look at uh, exodus chapter 14 everything worked against the egyptians if when they went forward they went forward in opposition to the desire and the mandate of the lord in fact the supernatural power of god that worked to help the children of israel worked to hinder at the same time the egyptians the elements were controlled to defend god's people those same elements were controlled to defeat and destroy the Egyptians. That's why if you have an unsaved spouse, or saved husband, unsaved wife, it will be your greatest prayer that this year that unsaved wife or husband must be born again. Must give himself or herself to the Lord. Then you can march on and by the grace of god your family will make progress in jesus name but understand understand in spite of opposition in spite of obstacle problems there are problems will be there and uh, the difficulties will be there but the christian family must go forward in prosperity or adversity in sickness or in health in life and until death the mandate of the Lord for us is move on, march on, go forward. Progress is necessary in order to keep past attainments as well as gain fresh victories. 
In spite of conflicts and misunderstanding, the family must take a little step forward each day. Examine your family and ask yourself, today, did we make any progress in love, in our harmony and unity together, in our communication together, in helping one another, appreciating one another, praying together, planning together, sharing together, putting our necks to the yoke of the service of the Lord. Did we make a progress today? Because it's a step at a time that gets you nearer and nearer to the promised land. As the Israelites could only reach Canaan, taking a step forward at a time, so it is with you and so it is with me. Surrounded by seemingly insurmountable problems, the family may not see the way forward, so it was with Israel. God, who has commanded to go forward, has reasons for that command, though we may not perceive those reasons. By the grace of God, in the power of the Lord, we're moving on. Obstacles will not stop us. Difficulties will not stop us. Our families are going to make progress this year in Jesus' name. Every step forward adds to your stability, adds to your growth, adds to the usefulness of the family. What's the thing we're to do then? One, go forward in obedience. Why? His comforts and care are abundant upon the obedient. Never for the disobedient. Never for the people that are sluggish and are dragging their feet. Do you see the Red Sea opened when those people marched forward? Moses stretched the rod in obedience and the sea parted and the children of Israel marched on. Go forward then in obedience. Don't wait until there are no problems anymore, no obstacles anymore, no difficulties anymore. The moment you hear the commandment of the Lord, march on. If you cannot look around, look up. And the Lord will give you the strength to move forward in Jesus' name. Number two, go forward in faith. His mercies are new every morning. Three, go forward without complaining, thanking God that things are not worse than this. You know, they, there are people that like to look at uh, the negative side of life. Oh, they say, look at my problem. Well, thank God that things are not worse than this. That uh, the problem is just limited to that point. Therefore, go forward without complaining. Go forward with a firm confidence. Leaving the future completely in God's hand. He'll be there before you get there. Go forward with earnest and constant prayer. Keep on praying. Standing on the promises of God that cannot fail. You'll be able to prevail over the howling storms of life. The family that prays in faith will soon have everything changed to their favor. I'll say that again. The family that prays in faith will soon have Everything changed to their favor. Go forward, therefore, fixing your eyes on Christ and the promised land. Go forward in love, in your family. Go forward in forgiveness. Go forward in kindness. Go forward in total dependence upon the Lord. God says, when God says, go forward, he does not leave us to ourselves. Go forward and you'll find a way through the Red Sea. In Exodus chapter 14, church progress in spite of obstructions. Church progress in spite of obstructions. In verse 15, once again, the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. I'm sure you know, but I'll remind you that a lot of things that were true about Israel was true and is still true about the church. Compare for a moment the children of Israel as a nation and the early church. 
What are points of similarity? Egypt opposed the growth of Israel. And you find when you look at the early church, the might of Rome opposed the growth of the church. There's another similarity. It took signs and wonders to deliver Israel. That's similar to the church. It took signs and wonders to deliver the apostles and preserve the early church. Also, after Israel became a nation on its way to the promised land, Pharaoh and the Egyptians pursued them to the shores of the Red Sea. Wasn't that the same with the early church? The Sanhedrin and the Jews, Satan and the very gates of hell sought to destroy the church. And yet, look at Israel again with mountains on either side. The Red Sea in front of them. And the Egyptian chariots pursuing from the back. God told the children of Israel, go forward. With the might of Rome, with the vehement persecution of the Jews, with Judaism of the, Jude, or the, of the Jewish teachers, and the philosophies of the Gentiles all fighting against the church, the Lord commanded, go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. So you see the point of similarity. As the Lord had told the children of Israel that they should march forward, that same God is telling the church that the church should march forward. I believe we can do it. And this year, we're going to make progress in church planting. We're going to make progress in evangelism. We're going to make progress spiritually in our spiritual lives. We're going to make progress in our impact on our community. And we're going to make progress in our faith. We're going to march on and we're going to conquer in Jesus' name. In uh, Matthew chapter 16, reading from verse 18. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Israel was on a divine mission. We are on a divine mission as well. This work will be done. We are going to make progress. There are not enough demons out of hell to stop our progress. And Satan cannot stop us either. The religions and the religious people of the world cannot stop us. We have heard the word from the throne of God in heaven. He said, go forward. And we know the Red Sea is going to part before us and we are going to make progress. This Congress is calling you and calling me. It's challenging us to go forward in our dedication to the Lord, in our worship, in our love, in our evangelism, in our church planting. It's calling us to march forward in service and ministry, in sanctification and holiness, in power, in authority, in victory. Can we do it? Can we march on? Are we tired? Are we going to backslide? Are we going to drop the work of God? Don't halt. Go forward. There should be no delay, no hesitation. Go forward at once. There is no security in turning back. Go forward. Hell follows hard after you. The only safety and security you have is to go forward. But it's good to go forward because heaven lies before you, not behind you. Go forward. Whatever you see, the Red Sea. Whatever you hear, the noise of the Egyptian chariots. Whatever you feel, fear, weakness, or trembling, go forward. The Almighty is going before you. We are moving on. Can you rise up and tell the Lord, I am going to make progress. I am marching on. I'm not going to look back. Whatever Red Sea, 
Whatever Egyptian chariots are there, whatever mountains are on either side, as an individual I'm marching on, as an individual I'm marching on, march on, will win the day. March on in faith, march on in obedience, move on in your dedication to the Lord. All the promises of God are for you. The everlasting arms are under you. The power of the Lord is supporting you. What he commands, he also gives you grace to fulfill. Move on. Let our families make progress this year. Make progress in love. Make progress in faith. We we'll progress in our harmony and unity together. We're marching on. That's the watchword of the Lord for us this year. Go forward. Let your faith increase. Let your devotion increase. Let your commitment increase. Let your consecration increase. Commitment to the Great Commission. Let it increase. Devotion to the Lord, love to the Lord, to do everything there is to be done in the kingdom of God. Move on. Why are you looking back? Don't be anxious. Don't worry about the Red Sea in front of you. March on. Do the work of an evangelist. March on. Hard times. Difficult times. March on. Conflict. Opposition. March on. Egyptians. Worldly minded people. Opposing your progress. March on. Getting tired, getting weary because of the heat of the day or because of failure in the past. Get up and move on. Discouragement. You sense your weakness. You are surrounded by seemingly impossible obstacles. The Lord is commanding you. Let the weak say, I am strong. Rise up and move on. You are not alone. The Almighty is with you. You are not alone. A power of God is supporting you. Have faith in God. Go forward. Do more this year than you did last year. You can do it. He never commands us to do what we cannot do. You can do it. With God on your side, with Christ living big in you, you can do it. Move on. Move on. Don't look at negative things. Move on. Don't listen to the noise of the chariots of the Egyptians. Move on. Make progress every day. Make progress in your spiritual life, your family life, 
and in the service of the Lord. <laughs>